The following is a Stars and Strikes Doubles rebroadcast, featuring some of our most memorable recent programs. WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Stars and Strikes Doubles. The legendary bowling center, Stars and Strikes Doubles, features the best caliber bowlers from around New England and team competition. Stars and Strikes Doubles is produced and conducted by the New Hampshire Hamilton Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Londonderry Bowling Center here in Londonderry, New Hampshire. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. And once again, it's time for Stars and Strikes Doubles. We hope you're enjoying your weekend so far. I'm glad you could take a little time to be with us. This is week two. And uh, last week, our number four, se number five seeded team uh, made quick work of their first match, and now they're going for two in a row. Yeah, X, X they had a very good score, too, 392. And uh, you hit 392 each time in doubles. You're going to win a few matches. All right, let's meet them and their opponents. Our number five seeded team back for a second go. From Natick, Massachusetts, Tom O'Brien. His partner from Plastow, New Hampshire, is Dave Richards. Okay, Dave comes, uh, Tom comes in averaging 128. Roll-off score was 647. And Dave Richards from Plastow. 126 and 645. All right, and last week, as Dan mentioned, they rolled the big 392 for a win over Joe Rollins and Peter Brooks. So now they'll try and make it two wins in a row, and the guys will try to stop them. Our number three-seeded team from Berwick, Maine, Dan Mitchell, and his partner from Manchester, New Hampshire, Chuck Godzik. Okay, and uh, Dan comes in averaging 118. His roll-off score was 661. And Chuck is at 126. His roll-off score 655. All right. Of course, prize money on the line uh, to the runners up today. The winners will move into our semifinal match next week. We'll tell you a little bit more about that as we move along. But we've got three strings of bowling to get to, and we will get it started right after we get to these words. Don't go away. All right, here's a look at our five teams in this series on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Last week, as we mentioned, Tom O'Brien and Dave Richards with the big 392. They get the win over Joe Rollins Jr. and Peter Brooks. So now they try and make it two in a row against our number three seeded team. Our number two seeds are Bob Kelly and Larry Valcourt. They'll be here next week. And two weeks from today, trying to defend that number one spot will be Steve Vadney and Bill Coffold. But right now it's lane 30 here at the Londonderry Bowling Center and it's Dave Richards to start this match for the team of O'Brien and Richards. This team had a double strike, Dan, in the first game last week and that's what really got them started. From then on, they were tough to stop. Yeah, we mentioned last week they had 71, I believe, through seven and then ended up with a 125 with that double strike. and. Like you said, they're off to the races after that happened. Dave unable to convert the single. And that will be a nine box. See, Dave's a few years behind me. When he gets a little older, he's going to know that you can use that wood. <laughs> <laughs> There's no crime in that. But I think he really, if he, missed, if he missed to the left, he would have still carried the 10 pin. Now he'll... Take a crack at another spare leave, the two and the four, and this time no trouble. And he really gave it the old clenched fist that time. Say, I'll show you. I missed one in the first box. I'm not missing this one. Spare up in the second. Now Dan Mitchell. And he's looking at the one, four, and seven. One, six, and oh, one, four, and seven. I was right the first time. That's a spare. <laughs> Dan Mitchell's only other appearance here on the wins was in singles competition back in December last year. He lost a very close match to Mike Sargent by just six pins. And this time he has all the four horsemen up there, the one, two, four, and seven. And the 10. 
for a 26 opening pair. Well, Tom O'Brien will fill the spare in the second. Oh, yes. Does he ever. Picking up about where he left off last week. See that ball spinning, and there goes the five and the, and the eight pins for the strike. And more importantly, it's on a spare. Well, he was fortunate not to leave the spread eagle that time. Two, four, three, six. Take your pick. I think I'd go three, six because you have a piece of wood behind the four. If you don't cut it quite enough, you could catch the wood. Ooh. That's what Tom was thinking. And the nine. 55 through four for the team of O'Brien and Richards. And now here's Chuck Godzik. Chuck's been with us on a number of occasions. Four and six. Piece of wood in front of the four pin. Also one now resting up against the six. Let's see if it turned. I don't know if it turned enough. He may be able to well, it's moving back. I was going to say, catch the six pin clean. Yes, just enough. How Great about shot. That? Yes. Great shot. Just enough of that wood to kind of twirl across and get the four pin. Chuck's had a great deal of success here on the wins. Huh? He is an overall record of five and two. Like that shot so much. He Gives himself the 4-6. No wood this time. No magic that time. You may remember Chuck from last spring. He and his partner Peter Flynn came into the doubles tournament of champions last year. Or earlier this year. And they came in as the number five seed and they zipped off four consecutive wins to get all the way to the finals. Before losing to Gary Carrington and Joe Ashline. Dave Richards, big first ball. The four pin. Nice little guy resting up against the four pin. Spare in a fifth, they're third in the first five frames. Two spares and a strike now. Light hit that time and just five. Just barely caught the head pin on the left hand side. Leaves himself the three, six, nine, ten, but also the seven. Let's see, can he throw it? No, not quite. It's a ten for Dave. Eighty through six. Pretty good start. Good look on lane 30 from Dan Mitchell's perspective. The one and the four. Nope. Right in between the one and the four that time. The lead is eight. Right now for O'Brien and Richards. Don't forget, coming up tomorrow here on the Winds, week two of our singles series. Gary Carrington going for his second win in a row. He'll face Chuck Langlois tomorrow at noon here on WNDS TV 50. Four horsemen, piece of wood in between the two and the four, which may cost him the shot. Well, we'll never know. It was missed the head pin. And he'll try to get this one for the 10 and remain eight pins behind. Nope. Make it nine pins. Our next taping session for Stars and Strikes Doubles here at the Londonary Bowling Center will be Tuesday, November 16th, just three days from now. So if you're going to be in the area anytime during the day next Tuesday from about 10.30 in the morning till 4.30 or so in the afternoon, we do take a one-hour break for lunch, but... Otherwise, we're here all day. 
Londonderry Bowling Center is located just off Route 102 next to the Apple Tree Mall in Londonderry, New Hampshire. Very easy to find from exit 4 off Route 93. It'll be a 9 box for Tom O'Brien as he can't convert the single. Tom's had a, a problem with singles both last week and this week. And there's another one. But this one <laughs> may be a little easier. This one you and I have a shot at making, Doug. <laughs> Four pin with a piece of wood in front of it. No trouble there. That's mark number four for the team. Mitchell and Godzik have two. And here's Chuck Godzik to try and add to that. Ball spinning, wants the break from right to left. Just hung it to the right, just missing the head pin. Let's see, the one, two, nine, ten piece of wood behind the one, two should help him. Oh, yeah. Fine shot. Second one by Chuck Godzik already. Okay, so Nicely wood, done. Wood did help. Took out both the nine and the ten. Crossing over this time. Let's see. Big nine pin drop. Just the six pin. And momentarily, anyways, have taken the lead. Must convert that if he wants to maintain it, though. And he does. Matching the spare in the eighth, so Gozik and Mitchell do, in fact, take the lead in the match. Oh, Dave is right in oh, there. Yeah. Just a matter of time whether it's going to be 8 9 or the strike, and just nudges the 10 pin right there. Second piece of wood, strike on spare. Opening game, both teams very well. Spread eagle this time for Dave Richards. That one looked like it was headed into the 1-3 pocket, and it kept biting hard with the spin. And The difference in that time, he laid the ball right down near the foul line, so it had a lot more time to break from right to left. He's been lofting the ball out a little further on the lane, which cuts down on the break, of course. That's an eight box for Dave, a 132 for O'Brien and Richards. They keep the good scores coming. Will it be enough to keep the lead? This fellow may have something to say about it, working on a spare. Big eight fill. Dan Mitchell looking for his Second mark, and the fifth for the team, all spares. That's three in a row for Mitchell and Godzik. You see the lead now switches back to O'Brien and Richards, at least temporarily, until he fills a spare. Six or more. There you How's go. That? How about 10? Big strike on spare. That's the six pin, just trip off the wall. Piece of wood coming off the wall, I should say, and trip out the six pin for spare, strike on spare, and a finish with four marks in a row. And maybe a chance at a fifth here on the three, four, six. Ooh, just missing, trying to play it inside, but still a fine 145 opening game for Dan Mitchell and Chuck Godzik. O'Brien and Richards never trailed last week, but they're down by 13 after one game this week. We'll be back with game two in a minute. Well, all kinds of excitement in that first game here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. 145 for Godzik and Mitchell. 132 for O'Brien and Richards. Godzik and Mitchell down with 74 pins in the last four boxes. Yeah, that's right. They went from nine down to the lead of 13. And there's a spare in the first. Chuck Godzik now to lane 29, and that one got away from him a little bit, just two. Almost reared up at the point of release and pulled the ball to the left. If you don't stay down with the shot, you'll pull the ball nine out of ten times to the left. 
Chuck and his wife Karen live in Manchester, New Hampshire. They have three children, 12-year-old Mark, 10-year-old Chris, and Beth, who's eight. Chuck works for Yankee Book as an inventory control technician, does a lot of his bowling at the King Lanes in Manchester. And he lost the effect of that spare in the first. Tom O'Brien. Oh. oh, he's had trouble with singles, so he's got another one to shoot at now. This time a little easier than the last one was on the seven pin. This one the ten pin for the left-hander. Right on that one. I'll tell you what, though, he hasn't had many problems with the first ball. <laughs> he has thrown some great first balls, both this week and last. Well, with just two on Chuck God's spare, he has a chance to really cut into the lead. Takes seven. And that'll reduce the lead to single numbers, and of course they're opposite a six frame. Going to try to cut the five pin on the left-hand side. Wouldn't surprise me if Tom makes this. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. How did you know that? <laughs> Singles, stay away. The tough spares, Tom will make them. Well, let's see. Any more damage here? The one, the five, eight, and nine. That was a great spare by Tom O'Brien. Oh. Dan, let that one get away. And missing the head pin again. We'll never know, but it looked like that could have gone for a spare. I believe so, if he was on the head pin. Of course, as you said, we'll never know. But forget about that one. The fourth frame now, second game. Needs some marks. Wants the seven pin out of there. Does happen. Three six left. Each team with seven marks already. Terrific match going. Ooh. And there you go. <laughs> Doing it the hard way is Dan Mitchell. A little light on the three pin, but luckily it goes to the right side wall right there and back down on top of the six pin for the spare. Now Dave Richards is working on a spare left by his partner. That spectacular one that Tom O'Brien came up with. A fill of seven. Six, seven, ten. <laughs> there he was directing the wood. He does have a shot. He set the wood out in front. Now whether the wood is deep enough to carry the seven pin, he's going to use it, carry him the ball off that. Oh, yes. yes. Very nicely done. Two fantastic spares in a row by the team of O'Brien and Richards. Well, and got a another break. big fill. Look out. Big break. Missing the head pin, leaves just the three pin. Almost got the strike. Make it four in a row? Yes. Yes, sir. Four marks in a row to start game two. We'll pause right there. Heck of a match going here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. We'll be back in a minute. Chuck Godzik working on a mark left by his partner. Oh, and things are just really oh, heating up. What? Oh, he got it. The strike. What knocked the 10 pin <laughs> over? I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> I says, well, he needs a break on the 5 pin, and as the 5 pin fell, so didn't the 10. Uh, just was nudged by the same piece of wood that knocked the 5 pin down, I believe. Oh, my. That's the second time in a row that... Of course, we're beyond Halloween, so the ghosts and everything should be put away for the year. <laughs> That's the second time in a row on lane 29 that Chuck has knocked out the two and the four. But this time, luckily, it was on the strike, so it gives him a seven fill. Could be the last team standing in this match. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Everything goes. Worth another look on the 1, 9, and 10. O'Brien and Richards is with four consecutive marks to take the lead in the match here in game two. Tom O'Brien trying to keep it going. He's off the head pin, but not too bad. 
one, three, six, and the sleeper in the back, the nine pin. Half a dozen on the spare, make it five in a row, no. Halfway through this match, the lead is just two for O'Brien and Richards. Tom, opposite of 10. Oh, he dropped it, but he got away with it. Tom dropped that ball and turned away, but it's one of those times when you can get away with it with the wood in front. Dan O'Brien, let's see if, uh, yeah, Dan O'Brien. Dan Mitchell, let's see if he can answer the call. Let's see, he wants that in the, yeah, big break there with an eight pin going down. You don't want to shoot the two and the eight without any wood, unless you have 10 pins up there. Then it seems like it happens all the time. Oh, no, no, boy. Just sliding between the dead wood and the two pin. It's a 10 box. Dan Mitchell from Berwick, Maine. He and his wife Dorothy have two children, two-year-old David and three-year-old Brittany. And there's a big strike in the eighth. There's a sign of a good competitor right there. Missed the single, forgot about the box, just come right back and he buries it in the one-two pocket for the strike. Dave Richards working on a spare put up by his partner, Tom O'Brien. No, oh, Dave's got it working right now. He didn't get a break that time, but he has really got things working. Dave trying to lean those pieces of wood the way he wants them. The crowd is really into this, too. They are moaning and groaning with a 5-7. Yeah. Right probably where the two pieces of wood meet would be a nice place to play this. Oh, had the right idea. Well, we both would have missed it, Dave, because that's where I would have played it. Maybe even played to the left and snapped the wood. I don't know, but tough shot regardless. Nine box. Dave Richards finished 10th in the roll-off, so he was the last guy to qualify with a 645, and he beat Paul St. Pierre by just two pins for that final spot. Now, well, might not have been what he wanted. Yeah, got a break off the ball, and then uh, kind of the break kind of disappeared with the three and the one going down. Last two pins, leaves himself the seven ten. Do you play that wood in front? Oh yeah, you got to play the wood in front of. No, I don't know. You could play that, or yeah, he's going to try that. Oh, yes! <laughs> Great shot by Dave Richards. That's exactly. Glad you brought it up, Doug. <laughs> Because he did have another piece of wood in front of the 10, and usually when that happens, half in the channel, half out, the ball will fly, and sometimes will come back down on the seven pin. But this is on a strike now for Chuck Godzik. Boy, these two teams are going at it. Look out. Oh, oh my. That's costly mistake there. on a strike. Costly mistake there. Just two on the strike. Gets out of it with the eight. The roll-off scores for this series were very, very close. Probably one of the closest series we've ever had. Yeah. Steve Vadney was number one at 670. And uh, Dave Richards, the 10th place finisher, only 25 pins behind. Well, Chuck Godzik chopped out the two pin only that time. If he's having trouble, he's pulling the ball to the left. Correct at that time, a little full in the head pin. But he's got to hope that uh, the team of Richards and O'Brien make a mistake on their mark in the eighth and stay within shouting distance. It's a 111 for Mitchell and Godzik, a two game total of 256. It appears that O'Brien and Richards will have the lead after two. It's just a question of how large the lead will be. Tom O'Brien filling in that spectacular spare left by Dave Richards, and it's a seven. The team of Mitchell and Godzik had two marks with two on it, but they also left 11 pins standing. 
Well, here's the significance of this 10th box now for Tom O'Brien, uh, Dan. The lead will be in the teens if Tom does not mark. If he marks, he'll put the lead over 20. And he'll have a shot at one. The four pin. Wood right next to the four pin, too. Yes. Mark number 12 for O'Brien and Richards. Now with any decent fill now, it's going to push the lead, as Doug said, into the 20s, which is almost a, a three-mark advantage for the team of O'Brien and Richards. Oh, my. Not what Tom was thinking of at all. He gets just three on the fill. A 145, a two-game total, 277, and the lead will be 21 for O'Brien and Richards. A third game to go. This terrific match continues on Stars and Strikes doubles after these breaks. Dave Richards will start game three. He and his partner Tom O'Brien leading by 21 pins. As they had to roar from behind in game two to get this lead. Oh yeah. <laughs> seven pin just enough to knock the seven pin over leads just the six. Takes it out. Yeah, that one slip away on him a bit. Just five. Oh, no, but he converts it anyway. He is on fire. He is just on fire. Made a mistake with the first ball, missing the head pin, but came right back on the head pin, cleared out the four horsemen and the eight pin. Two marks in a row, trying to protect the 21 pin lead. Oh, no break there. The five, seven, and nine. Eight. The winners of this match to come back next week to face our number two seeded team, Bob Kelly and Larry Valcourt. And it's a strike. Bouncing right back for Chuck Godzik. Absolutely. First ball was in the pocket, too. This time he did get the break on the five and the ten for the strike, as Doug said. A much needed mark because they're down by 21 coming into the game. And here's Dave Richards put two marks up. This will be the fill on that second one. He's right in the pocket, too, and the eight oh. pin goes down. Leaves just the nine and a nine fill on the spare. That was almost the seven, eight, and nine on the leave. Trying to make it three in a row. With another single pin, and he slips by. <laughs> and on the other side. Well, we'll see if Tom can recover from... That miss. Tom is waiting for a couple of his bowling balls to return. Here they come. And he's right back in the pocket and he does it too. This is the single, comes back with the strike. Crowd is kind of teasing him. You don't need more than one ball. Just take one and throw a strike. You have to worry about waiting for anything. <laughs> but I'm sure uh, Tom is thinking about. Oh, that's a double strike. Well, how about that for a turnaround? <laughs> we'll have to watch the score now as Dan Mitchell steps up and throws a strike on top of his partner's strike. 
I started to say that Tom O'Brien was probably thinking of missing the single, then coming back with a strike. And of course, we're kind of just uh, nonchalantly going through the match here and realized that was a big ball for Dan Mitchell. This is even a bigger one. Double strike. Oh. Off target. Just three. Let's see. Oh, my. Pins flying all over the place. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> it's not going to go. Gave it a scare, though. Well, Dan Mitchell goes open in the fourth, so when we return, Dave Richards will come back to fill that strike left by his partner. This match still too close to call. We'll be back with more on Stars and Strikes Doubles after these words. Dave Richards about to throw a very important ball. The lead temporarily is down to 15, but whatever Dave throws on this strike will add to it. Four horsemen to the right, one, three, six, ten left. And it would be a huge ball here if you can convert this for a spare. He does. That makes the lead 25 plus the spare up in the fifth now. 16 marks for O'Brien and Richards. A little heavy, but look at that oh, break. Wow. Oh. When you're bowling good, everything seems to go. He was flush on the head pin that time, got a real big break with the 10 pin going down. Four pin for another mark. No. Oh, he misses a single. <laughs> And the 10. Well, that leaves the door open at least a little bit for Chuck Godzik as he steps up. Great mix on that ball. He'll leave the 10. And Dan just won't quit. They just keep coming back. Ten pin. And there it is. Big spare in the fifth. That's 13 marks for them. Oh, big fill. Eight drop. That was the easy part. This is the hard part, trying to get two marks in a row because they're opposite the open frame, which would really help him reduce the lead. Oh, boy. Oh, that's a big mess right there. And we'll keep the lead over 20. Going to the final four boxes. 10. So it's 26 with four to go. One rotation left for each bowler. Tom O'Brien. Tom had a piece of wood spinning from right to left that was headed for the triangle, and another piece of wood stopped it. Or else he might have had more than just the seven. Two, four, five. Both teams missing some opportunities going down the stretch. Legitimate spare leaves, single pins, triangles. Which shows how well they're both bowling because they're going to have a couple of pretty good scores in this match. O'Brien and Richards should end up over 400. It's just a question of whether it'll be enough. Right. And Tom has another triangle. Another shot this time it's the 478 in the left hand corner. Again, the tougher shot for the left hander. Being in the near corner. Let's see. No. Well, there's an opening. 
There will be an opening for Dan Mitchell as he steps up for his final two. And if he were to throw two marks, this is going to be very interesting. Down by 26. Just missing the head pin. Make up a spare leave though. The one, two, and seven in a piece of wood in front of the seven. It's the only thought here, she's grabbed the head pin. Missing the head pin, chances are you're not gonna convert. Oh, and he pulled it badly to the left. Well, they're three marks down, and they only have three boxes remaining, so they're gonna have to put some marks up. In fact, you're right. There are exactly three marks down. Mitchell and Godzik have 13. O'Brien and Richards have 16. On the head pin this time. And, oh, a break kicking out the seven. So he'll have just the two. No. Nope. That will be costly. Well, the situation now going into the final two frames, the lead 25, so if Dave Richards were to throw a couple of big marks, he could close them out. But he should at least be able to put Chuck Godzik in a double strike situation. Dave getting what he can. He'll take the nine box. He knows that. Six pins now would put, seven pins would put Chuck Godzik in a double strike situation. And there is the seven and a couple of more and it'll be a spare leave. Four pin, piece of wood in front, piece of wood next to it as well. Should be any problem for Dave and it isn't. Is them 130 through 10 with a ball to come. 407 plus one ball. He gets away a little bit, but he got away with it. <laughs> it's a seven drop, a 137, and a 414 for O'Brien and Richards. Fine triple. Well, let's see a couple strikes by Chuck, and then we'll start figuring what he's got to throw strikes. Not there. And even if he had made that, the best he could have done was 157, and that would have been one pin short. So O'Brien and Richards have won another one. This one much tighter than their match last week against Joe Rollins and Peter Brooks. They were severely tested by the team of Chuck Godzik and Dan Mitchell. And oh, there's a strike boy. in the 10th, wouldn't you know it? That's the sixth strike thrown by the team of Godzik and Mitchell. O'Brien and Richards had only three. You go back to that second game, Dan, when O'Brien and Richards threw the 145, there were stars all over my score sheet for the spectacular spares that they made. Chuck finishes up with a six on the strike, a 133, and a very fine 389. But it's not enough on this day as O'Brien and Richards with the 414 get the win, their second in a row, and they'll be coming back for the semifinals next week. We'll talk about that and talk to our bowlers after these words.
All right, once again, it's a win for Tom O'Brien and Dave Richards. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy and uh, the 414 combined with that 392 that they threw last week. That gives them a 403 average for the two weeks. That's amazing. It, well, it's, it's amazing the score-wise, but when you see some of the shots they're made, uh, made uh, you wonder why they didn't go any higher than that. Uh, it's one of those days that uh, they complemented each other, and if you think of the single pins they missed, they could have been 440 or 450. All right, let's talk to all the bowlers. Let's first of all bring up with a big round of applause Chuck Godzik and Dan Mitchell, our runners-up. It'll be fourth place prize money for them, and uh, that'll mean $200 to be shared. And uh, guys, congratulations. It was a terrific performance. Uh, you just ran into a, a team that's pretty hot right now. Oh, they're bowling great. They really are. It's tough to keep up with them. <laughs> you had uh, the strike ball working, it seemed. Both of you did, but yet, uh, and in fact, a double strike at one point, but not, not enough to keep up with them. They just had all the big marks when they needed them. Well, they just bowled better than us. That's all. We did our best. <laughs> Tough to, uh, tough to roll a 380-something and, uh, and come up on the short end, but uh, I think maybe what it was is that they, well, you, you had them down after the first game, and then they made some terrific shots. I like to refer to, you know, put a star next to the good shots, and they made some terrific shots in that second game. They sure did, yeah. and we, we made some shots. We just didn't get our fills. I think that hurt us a lot, too. All right, well, congratulations to both of you. We appreciate it. I uh, hope to see you both again real soon. Thank you. All right. Too. Okay. Dan, thanks very much. Chuck, thank you. Congratulations. Nice bowling, and uh, we hope to see you again soon. Now, for a second time, let's bring up Dave Richards and Tom O'Brien with win number two in a row, and this one uh, in a little bit more spectacular fashion even than last week. As uh, boy, Let's talk about the second game first, because uh, that was the game that you guys had to come from behind, and you made a lot of terrific shots. Well, that's, that's right, Doug. Uh, what Tommy did, making that shot, it got us all, go both of us going, and just pumped us up, and we just got on the flow. Well, that would be the 5, 9, and 10 shot, which I have to admit that, that I predicted that you would make it right before you made it. So I, so I didn't put any pressure on you at all, but, but it turned out you were right there with me. You made the shot. Thanks, Doug. Uh, yeah, basically the only way to make that shot is you have to cut the 5 into. And it's a luck shot because you got to be just perfect. So you're either going to hit it or you're not going to hit it, but he made a fantastic shot further on in the match. I mean, I've never seen that type of shot made before, but Chuck and uh, Dan, uh, outstanding bowlers. And as Dan Murphy would say in the third <laughs> string, him laughing over there, we did miss quite a couple of single pins, and they missed a couple of marks. And you can't miss those marks against veteran teams because they will take advantage of that. That's right, 414, but geez, it could have been 450, 460. That's right. <laughs> if we didn't miss those singles, it would have been. <laughs> All right, that's two in a row now, and uh, boy, the competition keeps coming at you. Number two-seeded team now is... Uh, Bob Kelly and Larry Valcourt for next week. Yeah, I heard those guys before. I heard they're pretty good. <laughs> They'll be here, so we'll be looking forward to that match. Congratulations, guys. Two Thanks, in a row. Man. Thanks very much. We'll see you next week. And uh, here's a look at that matchup for next week now as we uh, show you the ladder again. And uh, Bob Kelly and Larry Valcourt sitting in that number two spot. Both quality candlepin bowlers, as we know, Dan. They've both been here on many previous occasions, but they're running into a team now that's very, very hot, Dave and Tom. Yeah, it's, it's happened the last ladder. You know, a team won four in a row, and they've got the same momentum, but uh, like you said, that's, a, that's another quality team, and it doesn't get any easier. All right, we hope that you will be joining us next Saturday at 12 noon here for Stars and Strikes Doubles. A couple of quick reminders. First of all, our next taping session here on Stars and Strikes Doubles here at the Londonderry Bowling Center will be in three days, this coming Tuesday. November the 16th, so we invite you to stop by right here at the Londonderry Bowling Center just off Route 102 near the Apple Tree Mall in Londonderry, New Hampshire. It's right off Exit 4 on Route 93. We start at about 10.30 in the morning and continue all day long except for a quick break for lunch. So if you're in the neighborhood at any time during uh, the day next Tuesday, we'd love to see you stop by, say hello, catch a little bit of the bowling in person. And don't forget, tomorrow we will have Week 2 of our singles competition here on Stars and Strikes on the Winds as Gary Carrington tries to make it two wins in a row. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a great weekend, everybody.